was my first instance of actually seeing a vulnerability in a software that could have an impact for a company. The proactive measure uh, to help you see the vulnerabilities before they get exploited. A lot of organizations who would test and look for vulnerabilities in their systems practically once a year. If something changes and releases tomorrow, again, they're vulnerable. Today we're diving into offensive cybersecurity and how ethical hackers and AI are reshaping penetration testing. Attackers are leveraging it as well. The rise of agentic capabilities, now it can actually do complex tasks and execute tasks. The Chinese uh, state-sponsored state actors actually bypass it. Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where we explore the insights helping businesses strengthen their digital security. Today, we're diving into offensive cybersecurity and how ethical hackers and AI are reshaping penetration testing. Our guest is Arafat Abdelzada, the founder and CEO of Stringray, a world-class ethical hacker with experience at the City of Toronto, General Motors, and other major organizations. Stringray delivers offensive security services that help companies evolve their defenses as threats advance. And in this episode, we'll explore Arafat's journey into ethical hacking, the value of proactive penetration testing, the importance of continuous security testing and the security and the future of cyber attacks in the age of AI. So without further ado, let's welcome our guest, Arafat. Arafat, we're very pleased to have you on the show today. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? Thank you, Maine. I'm good. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you, and I'm uh, very pleased to have you with us here. Now, Arafat, your journey into professional hacking started with a youthful curiosity and an iPhone 3G, and this was an eye-opening moment that sparked your passion. Tell us what eye-opening moment, like hacking the FIFA on your iPhone 3G out of curiosity, sparked your passion for cybersecurity. So this was um, in the early days of the smartphone. Uh, I was a teenager back then got my first iPhone 3G, so first smartphone. And it was during that time when FIFA released the mobile version of the FIFA soccer game. Mm -hmm. And I downloaded it, um, I was playing the game, and I noticed they also have like online multiplayer uh, option. As I explored that, um, playing online with other players from around the world, some of them had really good team and then I noticed that they were buying those players and you could buy them from FIFA mm -hmm. for basically using coins. And I was surprised that some of these uh, people that I was playing against were actually spending quite a lot of money in buying these players. I think uh, my curiosity led me into investigating this part. And that's how I ended up getting into the um, file system and and poking around and jailbreaking iPhone and then ended up basically getting into the FIFA. Um, I was able to load coins without paying for it. Mm -hmm. So at some point I had unlimited number of coins. And um, yeah, I purchased my dream team with the top players mm -hmm. you could imagine at that time. And um, which was just a curiosity that led me there. Um, and that actually opened up my eyes because I never thought this would be possible. Mm -hmm. um, so this was my first instance of actually seeing a vulnerability in a software that could have an impact for a company. Right. That is a fun and a unconventional origin story. And it really highlights that curiosity and experimentation. They are the ultimate foundation of cybersecurity expertise. Um, now let's explore the value of proactive penetration testing for businesses. Um, Arafat Stingray helps companies prevent breaches by simulating real world attacks and you offer specific services like web, API, and mock phishing testing. Uh, tell us why is penetration testing essential beyond basic vulnerability scans and 
What does a mock phishing assessment reveal about employee-related security risks? So you're correct, Maureen. So penetration testing, um, or in other simple words, ethical hacking, um, are the same thing. And this is basically a proactive measure uh, to help you see the vulnerabilities before they get exploited by threat actors. Um, what's the main difference between a vulnerability scan and a penetration test? Uh, vulnerability scan is automated. Um, it barely touches the surface. While penetration testing is manual, where we simulate real attacks, uh, we attempt to escalate privileges, uh, try to get into sensitive data, and that's the main difference because we're exploiting it. We're not just running automated tools. It simulates uh, a real-world hacker uh, tactics, techniques, and procedures as opposed to just running a vulnerability scan, which is just an automated tool. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a critical proactive step, uh, Arafat, and it kind of shows that simulating attacks is the only way to validate a company's true security posture. Now let's discuss a strategic shift from once a year testing to continuous security testing. Um, Arafat, you advocate for continuous penetration testing or, or PTAS uh, over the traditional uh, animal compliance driven um, pen test. So tell us why is the PTAS, which tests every code change and feature update, essential for securing uh, your environment year-round for an affordable fixed annual fee. Yes, I'm a big advocate for continuous security. Um, I'll give you a scenario. A lot of organizations, even small businesses, mid-market enterprise, they would they would test and look for vulnerabilities in their systems proactively once a year to comply, to satisfy compliance. Um, but if something their software developer changes and releases tomorrow, again, they're vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So they just paid for the test, it passes compliance, but it's not really providing actual security value. That's where penetration testing as a service or PTAS comes into play, where companies like us, we provide continuous security testing throughout the year facilitated and powered through the platform. So there's still a human in the loop that would be testing and actually ha attempting to hack into your applications to show you the, the real gaps and the blind spots. But the process is facilitated through PTAS, so you get to see your vulnerabilities live, the remediation party will be supported. Um, you could also download your report through PTAS. Because of the evolution of the traditional pen testing into PTAS now, PTAS is actually saving time and work effort for the companies who are doing this as a service too. That's why our the cost reduces. The main challenges were not because companies did not want to test more frequently. Cost was a, a concern for them, mm -hmm. a real concern. So with PTAS, you're, you're able to launch these ad hoc pen tests, um, but you can also do a continuous security testing through PTAS, basically you get a full-blown pen test, and then every time you release something new, those changes get tested ad hoc. Mm -hmm. um, that's how, in a nutshell, uh, the PTAS solution works. Um, and it, because of that, continuous security testing has been uh, possible by um, using this platform. That is a strong shift in model. It proves that security must be continuous to keep pace with the rapid speed of modern software development. This is if you are looking to upgrade your cyber defenses, and please learn from this conversation we had with Arafat um, about the future of cyber attacks in the age of AI, the strategic value of continuous security testing, and how to proactively prevent breaches in your business. Now let's continue conversation with Arafat. We'll take a quick break. Please don't go nowhere because when we're back, we'll dive into how AI is reshaping the future of cyber attacks and what businesses must do to stay ahead. Hey, you think you know UPS? Yeah, that's us. Everybody knows that. You know what you didn't know? This. Okay, try to keep up. Ocean, us. Ground, rail, air, so us. Guess who? Us. Customs cleared, borders cleared, done. Us, us. You still with me? 
Wait for it. Boom. Us. Intelligent, automated, fulfillment. Us. Yep, healthcare too. Digital your thing? Yeah, well, book it, ship it, track it. You feeling me yet? Yep, that's all us. That's all UPS. Welcome back, everyone. Let's jump right in and explore how AI is changing the threat landscape and what organizations need to prepare for the next. Now, I've had the, con the convergence of AI and cybercrime. It means attackers can automate exploits uh, faster and at scale. And this is redefining the threat landscape. Tell us how is AI currently changing the future of cyber attacks and what proactive steps should organizations take to ensure that their defenses evolve alongside emerging automated threats? AI is a double-edged sword. So if we're using it in our daily lives or defenders are using it basically to maybe reduce their SOC alerts, etc. Attackers are leveraging it as well. Mm -hmm. So it gives them that speed, um, the ability for automation that was not possible if we even look back two years ago. Um, with the rise of agentic capabilities, now it can actually do complex tasks and execute tasks. So the automation has, the capabilities of the automations have increased quite a lot. Um, the recent Anthropic uh, espionage that was Anthropic released, which showed basically how Chinese state, uh, Chinese sponsored state, uh, state actors um, use Claude, like a frontier model to almost do a wide scale attack, 80% of it without human intervention. Mm -hmm. There were three things they, they utilized during this espionage. They use the cloud's agentic capabilities that gives them more, more speed. Basically, they can, they can find information about the target company quite faster than a human would, pass that information to the cloud to analyze it. That's the advanced reasoning capability. And then after that, it can also take action. So using MCP, um, MCP allows connecting different tools. As we may have all seen, like ChatGPT allows you to um, give access to your terminal or to your browser to give you real-time feedback. So adversaries are leveraging and using that technology as well in their automation. Um, the problem also with the with this new technology is that it could be bypassed. Mm -hmm. Claude agreed that their AI model had built in guardrails, but the the Chinese uh, state state sponsored actors actually bypassed that. And they launched this whole thing um, for quite some time and targeted 30 companies. Uh, although a small scale of those companies were actually breached, but this was a huge espionage uh, mm -hmm. campaign. And this is just an example which shows us where AI is going and what sort of capabilities now the threat actors have. This also opens the, lowers basically the barrier for sophisticated attacks. Mm -hmm. um, there's other tools in the dark web that people are very well aware of now in the cybersecurity community, like Worm GPT. It's a customized jailbroken version of GPT. You can ask Worm GPT to create your malware, write code, things that ChatGPT by default may not allow you. Right. So the attacks are going to increase. So with the speed will increase, the barrier for these attacks are going to result in more people actually getting into hacking and, and targeting companies. 
that's a necessary strategic warning, Arafa. Then it confirms that AI is accelerating threats and requiring businesses to implement AI power detection and response. Um, finally, now let's discuss uh, Stringway's global growth, uh, industry recognition, and the future vision. Arafa, you lead a team of world class ethical hackers, and Stringway was shortlisted for a pitch at the SAS North conference this year. And this uh, kind of signifies the market recognition. Uh, tell us what does being shortlisted um, uh, for the SAS North signal for Stingray's market validation? And what is your long term vision for PTAS and offensive security for Canadian businesses? Yeah, having the opportunity to pitch at SAS North, which was um, this year, was a big achievement for us and um, motivated us and, and further. Um, prove to us that this is a real um, value add for organization if they want to achieve continuous security and be protected continuously. My goal is to further enhance our capabilities that we have at Stingray uh, within our platform. So we have our own built platform that we built from scratch, PTAS. Now we're adding agentic capabilities. Basically, we're in beta phase now. We test it. And our AI-powered agent can actually uh, identify even complex vulnerabilities now, mm-hmm. like access control, logic bugs, chaining vulnerabilities. And our goal is to provide this to our clients or any, any organization who would want to achieve continued security, but without breaking the bank. Right. Because our agentic AI tool would reduce our work effort by at least 50%. And then our team can focus on the core uh, strategic, critical, or high-level vulnerabilities. Um, basically, the AI agent will work as a, as a co-pilot for our team. And this would further make continued security uh, accessible and affordable for all sides of businesses. That's an ambitious vision, uh, Arafat, and it highlights that innovation and global reach, they're the key to Stringray's mission to protect the digital economy. Um, but this has been a great conversation. Thank you so much for sharing uh, what you do and what is planned for the near future. Um, as you wrap up, Arafat, if there is one uh, key message that you want listeners to remember about confidently investing in the digital future, what would it be? My advice would be to invest and protecting your digital uh, future from now on. It's better to be proactive than waiting for a breach because if you invest now, probably cost you a lot less than if you get breached. And this has been proven by reports issued by IBM, Mm -hmm. by Verizon breached, uh, summary report. So it's a a proactive measure, Um, long-term investment in your own company. Um, Then also your there's a financial loss, but there's also protecting your brand. Yeah, uh, We all have a shared responsibility to protect data um, that we we basically keep. So it's, uh, it's an investment for the long term yeah, for your digital future. Well, that is a powerful and an actionable message. Thank you so much, Arafat, for being on the show and for sharing such great expertise and your vision with us. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Maine. Thank you for having me. And that was a great conversation with Arafat on AI-driven cyber risks, the value of penetration testing, and why continuous security testing matters. Uh, thanks for listening for the. Uh, thank you a lot for listening to the podcast. Uh, please subscribe for more insights and uh, visit our website CanadianSME.ca for tools and resources that support your success. A big thank you to our partners RBC, UPS, A1 Global College, ADP, and Google for supporting small businesses across Canada. We'll see you in the next episode. Please keep moving forward.